The date is September 12, 1970. It's Hilda Lauber interviewing for the Oklahoma Living Legends Library located at Oklahoma Christian College in Oklahoma City. I'm interviewing in Enid, Oklahoma. This is a celebration of the, uh, Cher the run of the Cherokee outlet. I'm interviewing Mrs. Hoffsummer. Uh, Ms. Hoffsummer, did you um, come in here the day of the run? No, we came just the next month, just about a month after the opening of the Cherokee Strip. How old were you? I was nine years old. Do you remember it very well? Oh, yes. I remember uh, um, when we came through Enid, uh, when we arrived here. Uh, there, Enid <coughs> was um, just a mass of tents and um, uh, shacks, and I can remember the pounding of the of the hammers uh, uh, in build, putting up these shacks, and uh, so on. Uh, and um, we came down uh, here in uh, uh, lumber wagons. I mean, the covered wagons, and um, we had one buggy, and there's about 13 or 14 of us came at the same time, my grandfather's family and our family. Where did you come from? We came from uh, near Concordia, Kansas. How many members of your immediate family? There were just four of the immediate family, and then- Who were they? Uh, uh, Smith. Her name, our name was Smith, Frank Smith. Uh-huh. So it was your mother and father? They were foster mother and father. I see. And one, uh, who was the other person? You said Cousin, a cousin. What was uh, the cousin's name? V.E. Smith. Mm -hmm. And when you came down here, it was a bustling town, as you said, and it didn't take long to form. Is that correct? That's right. What was the first thing your family did? Had you intended to uh, come to Enid and settle here? Or uh, no, uh, we, uh, my uncle, uh, my aunt and uncle were my, same as my foster parents. And um, they come with the expectation of uh, uh, settling on a claim, which they did. Mm -hmm. Were there still claims open after the first day? Uh, there were um, uh, occasionally uh, you could find a place that hadn't been uh, settled on. Mm -hmm. How near Enid did you find a claim? About uh, six miles north uh, west of Enid. Mm -hmm. And so your family were farmers when they yes, first arrived. That's right. Uh, what was the land like in your section? Well, uh, uh, a very fertile, um, it was a very fertile land. Uh, my uncle um, put out fruit trees uh, right away after he got the shack made and things uh, going. And uh, uh, we had a spring right near the house and, the, and we dug out a place, a uh, good sized uh, um, hollow where the water collected and that was uh, where we got a drinking water for a while. Well, when you say we, you were a nine-year-old girl at the time. Did you have chores to do too? Oh yes, we uh, we milked. I, we took turns milking the cow. Usually, we had one cow. Did you bring it with you? No, I don't know. We had them together. One time, she fell in the creek, and um, oh, we were so excited about it because. We don't know what, how we had gotten along with that, or and they hitched some horses uh, to uh, ropes around her, drug her out, and we made a fire and got her all uh, warmed up, and she finally got all right. Uh, did you have any other um, um, animals on the farm? Oh, yes, they had the, the horses. Now, they brought their horses um, from Kansas, and uh, they got my uncle. Um, secured a 
what they call a breaking plow, and they broke the sod up and, and uh, began to uh, get ready to raise the crops. What crop were you going to raise? Well, they put in, uh, I remember, uh, corn, and then they planted a field of alfalfa, and, and um, of course, later on, they put out fruit trees and, and um, berries, blackberries and strawberries, and different kinds of fruit and vegetable vegetation. Well, it didn't take long for them to get busy and establish a farm, then, did it? Well, it was kind of a long, um, hard time for a while because uh, during a year or two it was very dry weather and uh, we had a pretty hard time but we raised chickens and with the poultry um, um, and, um, and the cows we had, animals and so on, why we managed to, and uh, my uncle got uh, work at that time they only paid about 50, 75 cents an hour, but there was an old soldier who um, had to have quite a bit of work done. He just had one arm, and uh, my uncle uh, helped him quite a bit, and of course that brought in a little to help feed the rest of us. Mm -hmm. uh, did you receive any education during this time? For the first few years, we didn't have a school, and then um, uh, they decided we just had to have a school, and so they uh, uh, fixed up a sort of a, well, it was a dugout, really, just a dugout. They dug out a uh, place in the hills, in the hill there, and um, we had to furnish our own um, desks and uh, chairs and and um, it was and we just had one window in the doors I remember we had a fireplace to keep us warm in the winter time there was about eight or ten children who went to that little school can you remember the name of your teacher yes Mariah Holman she was, very, she was a maiden lady and a um, very uh, faithful teacher. And did you uh, receive all of your education in this one-room school? Oh, no. We just went there a year or two, and then, um, then we went to school in a vacant house for a while. And then finally, we got the little blue schoolhouse, a uh, uh, little blue schoolhouse, and um, there were just three of us students in the first school, and uh, the sister of one of the uh, students uh, taught us, and she received $30 a month. Do, do you recall uh, ever hearing how much education she had before she started teaching? Well, I don't recall just... Uh, how much education she had. So now they uh, uh, did teach with just an eighth grade education. Yes. Can you tell me about the subjects that you studied in both of the dugout school and in the Lobo school? Well, they stress reading, writing, and arithmetic more than uh, anything else, and uh, grammar. I remember uh, uh, in <coughs> In one school, I was uh, studying Harvey's uh, grammar, the small book it was. The teacher told me if I'd learned everything in that book that, that uh, I, could, uh, I could become a teacher. And that rather inspired me to, uh, in a way, I thought, oh my, me become a teacher? But that's just what I became. Very good. <laughs> Tell me some of the games you used to play. Well, uh, the main game out in that in the <coughs> country school was uh, baseball, and uh, they would choose us girls just the same as uh, the boys, and we could run just as fast and bat just as well, I think, as they could. Anyway, we had a wonderful time, and then we'd play um, Too Late for Supper, and one time when I was playing that, one of the boys ran into me and broke my nose. <laughs> 
And I just about fainted, me all that just disrupted everything. The boys went to get water from the pump, and uh, and, uh, and they had to. I just about fainted, and and one of them threw a glass of water in my face, and I finally came out of it all right. <laughs> uh, talking about a broken nose, uh, what about medical uh, uh, care? during the beginning of the, um, the settlement. How did you take care of disease and broken noses and so forth? Well, we were just uh, so healthy that uh, we didn't seem to need uh, much medicine, and I just don't remember ever going to a doctor during those times. And um, my folks, uh, I had had the measles before. I came to live with this aunt and uncle, and but I remember uh, my aunt having the measles and a few things like that. But otherwise, we were just a healthy group of people. Going back to the homesteading, uh, was your uncle the first one to lay claim to this homestead, or had he purchased it from someone? No, there, <coughs> there was. <coughs> We had a contester um, that uh, we had gone in and had started our building and everything before he uh, contested. I don't know just on what grounds he contested us, but anyway, uh, my uncle uh, was the one who was um, given the priority and mm -hmm. got home. Uh, hard. Uh, we had to c carry water from, get water from other places before we got our well dug and the pump. Um, we pumped all of our water cores, and um, we um, used uh, the wood ashes for uh, to make lye. Put water on the wood ashes, make lye for washing and. You used the lye for the soap? We used, we made, uh, we homemade soap, and um, I don't know whether we bought the lye for that or not, but anyway, I know we used a lot of homemade soap and uh, lye from the wood ashes. Mm -hmm. uh, give me an example of a uh, average breakfast that you would have. Well, my uncle didn't like toast, and uh, he liked hot cakes, so we usually <laughs> Hot cakes for breakfast, but for dinner, uh, oh, sometimes biscuits. But we had hot bread most of the time for breakfast, and eggs and bacon and and biscuits or hot cakes for breakfast. Well, pretty much like the breakfast we have today. Yes, and then at uh, noon we had um, so many chickens, and then they raised hogs after a little while, and all oh, those hams that were were uh, home cured just from smoking them in the smokehouse and were delicious and of course we had the bacon and eggs and and um, then we did a great deal of canning after the fruit trees got bigger and um, and raised our own potatoes and everything like that and so we fared very well. Well you, you were very self-sustaining at the time. You grew your own uh, uh, food and uh, apparently took care of your own medical problems. Um, what about um, sewing? Well, my aunt did most of the sewing. She was uh, quite a seamstress. Uh, she would make my clothes for school and uh, I would usually do the other work. And uh, my cousin and I would go out, and uh, I always had to go help with the milking. And uh, even if we had just two cows, I had to milk one of them. And uh, we would do that while my aunt got breakfast. And um, did you ask? <laughs> and uh, so I would take care of the cream, the milk, and the butter. And, um, and do up the housework while she did my sewing. And so I didn't really learn to do my sewing except uh, mending and uh, altering and 
um, things like that. And today I would rather uh, alter something than to uh, get material and cut out a new dress. How close was your uh, nearest neighbor? Oh, well, lived just on the next farm, which was, oh, probably uh, half a mile from where we were. And she was a widow. Widow and her daughter lived there. And um, they used to uh, have my uncle uh, come over and do work for them every once in a while. He dug a cave, I remember, and he got 50 cents and 50 cents a day. I think he only got 50, cent, 50 or 75 cents a day for the work that he did on it. What did they use the cave for? Well, in those days, they uh, all liked to have the cave to put their um, their food in after they got it canned and their, uh, keep their potatoes and apples and things like that in. And then, uh, stormy, they could go to the cave and, and um, for protection. Speaking of a storm, uh, do you recall of any uh, tornadoes in this area when you were young? Yes, I remember one time especially when the wind blew so hard. It wasn't exactly a tornado, I guess, but it was... We got up and and stood against the wall of the house. I remember to keep it from blowing in, it was just more of a shack. That was our first house. Mm -hmm. And um, it was... We were pretty frightened at that time, but um, the house didn't blow away anyway. <laughs> what did you use for fuel? We used uh, blackjack. Uh, um, mostly my uncle would go out uh, to uh, the blackjacks west of us, and um, he would uh, buy a, uh, one time I knew he bought, bought about an acre of land out of uh, trees out there. and. Um, and then they would go out and uh, cut those trees and bring them in, and uh, we would use that for wood um, in the cook stove and also in the heating stove. Sounds like your uncle was quite a worker. Yes, he was. He was, he was very industrious. Um, what nationality were your family? Well, I... Your uncle? I can't uh, tell you. My grandfather claimed he was Dutch. Uh huh. <laughs> All right. Now I know that the uh, the settlers worked very hard, but I'm sure they set aside time for uh, social life and fun. Do you remember your social life? Well, uh, uh, we had a ones we finally had a Sunday school a man by the name of Doherty. Uh, older man with a little goatee, I remember. Uncle Billy Doherty, we called him. And uh, he um, started the Sunday school. He thought we should be in Sunday school. So that was my first experience uh, since I was a little, just a very small child, um, of getting, having a chance to go to uh, uh, religious service. And then uh, afterward, we moved into uh, a schoolhouse and uh, where we had an organ, and uh, I had taken some music lessons. I uh, drove a pony to a little cart to go take my lessons, and I'd learned enough that I could play a little bit at the Sunday for the Sunday school, and uh, sometimes taught a class. If Uncle Billy told me to, I thought I had to do whatever he said. He was a wonderful teacher and superintendent of our group, Afterward, we had a minister come once in a while. What congregation was this, of religion? Well, uh, um, after we got the little blue schoolhouse, uh, we uh, met there some, and it was under the Methodist. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the name of the person that uh, gave you piano lessons? Uh, Mrs. Washburn. And she gave these to you in her home? Yes. Mm -hmm. And you had a piano at your own home to practice? I had a, an organ. I had an organ at home that I practiced on. I see. Was this brought from Kansas? No, there was a man by the name of McKissick who uh, sold pianos in this part of the country for 
a long, long time, and um, we had bought this this uh, organ from uh, him. Was it a pump organ? Yes. Mm -hmm. I, and then uh, his uh, this McKissick's daughter and I became uh, pals in uh, high school. I went to high school at Hennessy after they after having the experience in the grade schools. In the grade schools, we just had school about just three months grade school for uh, a few years and then just a six month school and I hadn't had more than a six month school um, when I went to Hennessy to the grade school there we had our nine month school and what? I started in the uh, in the eighth grade in Hennessy school. What was the reason for such short uh, school period? I don't know whether they couldn't afford any more or why, but that was it. Uh, did your teachers return each year or did you have a new one? We had a, the same teacher for quite a while, McLaren was her name, Myrtle McLaren. And she was, as I say, said a while ago, she was a sister of one of the students in that school. But uh, after a time, in the little blue schoolhouse we had, Oh, 16 or 17 students in that school. And uh, we children had to walk about two miles to that school by going across, cutting across about a mile and a half. Mm -hmm. And uh, folks took us when it was snowy or bad weather. Mm -hmm. How far was your homestead from the nearest town? About six miles. Did you visit town very often? We would go at least once a month, usually in the lumber wagon, to take our produce, our eggs, and and um, um, chicken sometimes, anything that we had. That uh, in the way of produce, we would go about once a month. We'd trade our produce for groceries, and I remember we got some of the stable things. I always got uh, oh we had flour and prunes and coffee and raisins and just a few of those things that I remember that we always had that was good for us. Was the town Hennessy that yes. you went to? Yes. And then later you went to school there? Yes. Uh, you started eighth grade there and did you continue on through high school? Yes, they um, extended the high school to a four years high school course that year. So, um, of course, I made it in three years and a half, and then uh, I um, taught in the next two years. Well, how great. You made it in three and a half years, and then you became a teacher. Mm -hmm. Where was your first teaching job? Uh, my first teaching job was out uh, west of uh, Hennessy. I taught two years in the country, and then I uh, went to Cashin and taught two years. And I went to walk home and taught one year. Came up to Enid and taught uh, two years and then was married and went to uh, Hillsdale. Tell me something about the first school you taught in. Was it a one-room country school? It was a one-room country school and we had all of the grades in that country school. And you taught all of the grades? And I taught all the grades. How many then. students? I had about I think about 20, I'm not just sure. About 20, I think. And, and did you have a student in each grade, which would make eight grades for you to teach? There was, um, I, it seems to me that the, there wasn't anyone in the fifth grade. There were one or two grades, usually, you just had maybe have one in, or you could combine or something. But uh, some of the schools were, um, uh, rather crowded and did have all the grades. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned that you uh, married uh, after you had taught for a while. Now uh, before you were married you certainly did uh, have a, a social life there. What were some of the things that oh, you did? You asked me that. Oh well, uh, uh, a social life. Uh, uh, I spoke about the Sunday school. Well, uh, 
there were um, parties. We used to have parties in the country and uh, quite a few little social dances around. And, um, and we'd get together uh, for just a social time and um, uh, make ice cream and uh, have ice cream and cake. Just the families in the community get together for that. And uh, we um, managed to, sometimes the young people would play games at that time, like, um, oh, um, drop the handkerchief, or uh, too late for supper, or play ball, or something like that. What was your mode of transportation? Uh, usually, we went uh, either in lumber wagons or in, a bu in buggies. And um, if a young fella got a new buggy, why, we were usually wanting to ride in it. <laughs> and you remember the first time you started uh, riding in a car? Uh, yes, I remember the first car ride I had. And we went 40 miles an hour, and I thought, oh my, wasn't we going fast? I was on the uh, uh, George House Summer, um, my husband's brother's car it was, I was in, and uh, we were going on the highway uh, toward, um, what's that place I'm in? Well, anyway, from here, out from Hillsdale. Do you remember what kind of a car it was? I think it was a Ford. I'm not sure. Model T? No. Oh, I suppose it was too. I don't, I don't remember. Uh huh. You lived in the town of Hillsdale when, after you were married? Yes, we lived there for uh, two years. Mm -hmm. And uh, did they have, um, oh, a fire department? Was it an established town with? Uh, library, schools? Well, it was, um, we had somewhat of a, a library, usually just a few books in each room, and, uh, and it was all on the ground floor, and uh, um, just a frame building-like. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we had one of those big old, I remember the first big old stove. It was just big stoves we used that first year. Do you have uh, a family of your own? No, I'm all alone. My husband passed away in 1955, and um, our lovely daughter passed away in 1936. But you did have, have a uh, daughter. Oh. Uh, our first baby. Mm -hmm. Then, did you live most of your married life in Hillsdale? No. And we were there about two years, and then we were in school a year at Alva. And then we came back to uh, Hillsdale and was there one more year, and then Mr. Hoffsummer was appointed county superintendent of Garfield County. So we were down here for seven years. Mm -hmm. You married a schoolman. Yes, and then uh, he had been uh, superintendent of uh, schools, different schools, before we were married. Mm -hmm. and, then, uh, at, and then we went to uh, Hillsdale, and uh, I taught there for 22 years. Oh, you're a retired school teacher then. Yeah. Hmm. What was the last date that you taught? Uh, I retired in uh, 1950. Then you saw a great change in our education system oh, in Oklahoma, oh, didn't you? Yes, yes, and uh, uh, in uh, transportation and in, uh, oh, and just a multitude of different things. <laughs> things are different. <laughs> And uh, 
Do you live in Enid now? Yes, ma'am. When did you come back here? In 1955, uh, my husband was ill, and um, uh, he passed on in 1955. Then you found a different Enid when you returned here from the first time you oh, saw it. Oh, yes, and I often think about that. First, the uh, first impression that I got of Enid, just a city of uh, shacks and tents and, and big hubbub. And everyone had great ambitions. Oh, yes. Of uh, all of the children that you have taught, can you think of any one or two or three that uh, have done anything outstanding for the state or perhaps for the nation? Well, not uh, so especially, except uh, some of them have become teachers, and uh, then uh, I think of um, uh, one, uh, a bit, he's become a lawyer, and uh, some have entered the different professions mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that uh, I've heard from. They still keep in touch with some of them. Uh -huh. Well, now that you have moved back to Enid, what do you do? I have been doing private tutoring more or less ever since I moved back to Enid. And um, um, the last uh, year or so, I I had thought I wasn't going to do this work anymore, but there were a couple of adults who have needed help, and so I have been working with them and enjoying it very much. At Mrs. Hoff's summer, uh, many years have gone by, and I'm wondering what has happened to the old homestead. Well, it was sold to uh, um, some bo a Bohemian family and uh, they uh, still um, cultivate the land and live there and seem very happy. And uh, I'm happy in my home here in Enid. And the, uh, your aunt and uncle, did they remain all their life on they, this homestead? They, uh, they never moved to town? No, no, they passed on. All right, thank you very much. All right, uh, did you ever belong to uh, any clubs, garden clubs, literary clubs? I uh, don't remember of any garden clubs. We did uh, raise uh, flowers, though, the old, uh, old uh, coxcomb and um, the, the uh, hardy flowers. But uh, we did have uh, literary societies. We met in uh, the schoolhouses. And uh, always had an interesting program. It uh, seemed as if the um, people were willing and ready to uh, respond with uh, uh, old poems and speeches. And sometimes we would have uh, uh, a regular speaker come to our uh, meetings. And uh, they would come from quite some distances to uh, be in our programs. I'll tell a little story about uh, your husband's cousin, Beulah. Yes. Is that right? Um, her first boyfriend, at one night, uh, he had brought her home from uh, oh, uh, some social gathering, and uh, her parents were not home. And so he waited outside the uh, house for her parents to come. And when her parents drove up, they found this man sitting in a buggy outside their home and they started chasing him and they chased him all <laughs> over the countryside <laughs> and all he was doing was protecting your husband's cousin <laughs> do you remember this story at all i don't but that was quite unfortunate <laughs> yeah. i thank you very much it's been an interesting uh, interview of course, as we grew up, we had the hardships, you know, and we can't remember the tale, like that. Mm -hmm. But I've been having to remember the literary society. Yes. Uh, added so much in uh, those times, you know, mm -hmm. to uh, uh, 
um, all sort of keeping us uh, a little more like, um, um, in touch with the rest of the country. And, uh, and uh, mentally, you know, yeah. to keep us uh, uh, above the daily grind of things, you know. Well, and being a teacher, you would enjoy this, too. Yes, but I wasn't a teacher. That was not before I became a teacher. Oh, it was? So that was in the early days. Oh! Before I became a teacher. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, I was attending the school. It was before I went to the Hennessy High School. That's when, uh, that's when I was in school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, now I was twin, and you think this is queer, but I was um, 17 when I went to Hennessy in eighth grade. You see those just, just three month schools and then yes. six months schools yeah. too. And uh, the sea time went on. Yeah. I kept going over. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you so much.